Hey, what up, guys? Coming here this morning doing my 2019 True Boxing Awards. Um, handing out uh, individual awards, you know, based on uh, different, you know, different, you know, different uh, subjects of boxing. Uh, this one, this video, we're going to discuss the rematch of the year. Now, um, how I broke down the rematch of the year, just basically, it was the most hyped fight with a combination of uh, excuse me, whether one fighter got revenge or not. And, um, you know, again, the, I think the hype of the fight was the biggest thing I looked for on this. And then the finish, if it was a dominating finish, if it was revenge, if it was the same thing, you know, I, I factored in all this stuff when I, um, when I was, uh, breaking all these down. Um, again, with rematches, there are a decent amount of rematches every year in boxing. Uh, meaningful ones are harder to come by. And then, um, you know, like real meaningful ones. But then, um, you know, so what, what I mean by that is not every division got a candidate. This is another award where not every division got a candidate. But there were some pretty solid, uh, you know, rematches in 2019. It was uh, a lot more than normal, in my opinion, in terms of significant rematches. So let's run through the candidates right now, and then we will do our top five. We start with the candidate from 122 pounds, the super bandweight division, and that was the rematch between Emmanuel Navarrete and Isaac Dogbe for the WBO super bandweight championship. This was a rematch of, uh, of a fight where Navarrete um, defeated uh, Dogbe in December of 2018 by a, by a convincing 12 round unanimous decision. Um, in the rematch, it was uh, 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 Navarrete battered Dog Bay to a 12th round TKO victory um, in the rematch to retain the title. Uh, the next candidate one tw is at featherweight 126. Now they didn't get a, uh, a candidate, but I'm I'm going to mention uh, one of three candidates from 130 pounds super featherweight division, and the one I'm going to talk about on this one is Andrew Cancio versus Alberto Machado two for the WBA regular super featherweight title. Um, this didn't win out 130, but it was close. This is a rematch that took place in June of uh, 2019. Uh, their their original fight was in February when Cancio scored a monster upset uh, with a fourth round knockout victory. Machado said it was because of, um, you know, because of weight, why he lost that fight. So they rematched in June and um, Cancio left no doubt in the rematch, knocking out Machado in just three rounds this time to retain the title. So, um, yeah. Next, uh, the next candidate is from 130 pounds. Uh, well, it's, it's the second uh, candidate, the number two from 130 pounds. And that is the, um, that is uh, Andrew Cancio versus Rene Alvarado two, which took place in November of 2019 when, um, the first fight they had took place, I believe, in 2015, where Cancio had a come-from-behind knockout victory in the eighth round over Alvarado. Um, the rematch would not be the same. Cancio came in the favorite, but Alvarado was a mandatory number number one contender, and Alvarado just beat down Cancio. He beat him up. Uh, Cancio fought hard, but he could not figure out Alvarado. He was just overwhelmed. He was down on points. He got a cut opened up over his eye uh, from a punch. And uh, they ended up stopping the fight after, I believe, the seventh or eighth round. And Alvarado got his revenge and became champion. The next candidate is also from 130 pounds. And that is Miguel Burchelt versus Francisco Vargas, two. Their first fight um, took place in January of 2017 when Burchelt came out of nowhere and upset Vargas, who was number one or number two at the time in the division. It was uh, considered to be a big upset as uh, Burchelt knocked Vargas out in 11 rounds. Um, in the rematch, Burchelt beat, um, in the rematch, Burchelt defeated Vargas by a sixth round TKO. There is no candidate at 135 for, uh, for, for rematch of the year. They didn't really have a, a good top 10 type rematch in that division. Uh, 140 also didn't have a candidate. Um, and 147 did not have a candidate. But 154 did. It had a big candidate uh, here. It was Jermel Char. It was Tony Harrison versus Jamel Charlo, too. 
Uh, their first fight was in December of 2018 when Harrison scored a hard fought but controversial 12 round unanimous decision over Charlo in a fight that a lot of people thought Charlo won. Harrison came in in the, uh, in the rematch. Charlo got his revenge scoring an 11th round TKO victory to regain the WBC title. The next rematch uh, at 160, the candidate, which is middleweight, the candidate is Rob Brandt versus Rio de Murata 2. Their first fight was in October of 2018 when uh, Brandt scored a monster upset by dominating Rio de Murata to a lopsided 12 round unanimous decision to capture the title. In the rematch in July, Murata got his revenge. He hurt Brandt early, he was landing big power shots and stopped him in the second round to regain the world title. So big time win right there for Murata. Uh, 168, which is uh, super middleweight, did not have a candidate for rematch of the year. 175, this one uh, had a big candidate. It was Elider Alvarez versus Sergey Kovalev too. Um, their first fight was in August of um, 2018 when Alvarez scored a monster upset, stopping uh, Kovalev in the seventh round of that fight, big time knockout win. Kovalev got his revenge in the rematch, uh, scoring a dominating 12 round unanimous decision as he regained the WBO title for a third time in his career. The next candidate is from, or actually Cruiserweight I don't believe had a, let me see here. Cruiserweight did not have a candidate, but heavyweight has two candidates. Um, the first is Deontay Wilder versus Luis Ortiz, two for the WBC world title. Their first fight was in March of 2018, um, where Wilder scored a a a tenth round knockout victory over uh, Ortiz at, after an all out war between the two. The rematch saw Wilder leave no doubt, scoring a seventh round knockout over Ortiz to retain the, the WBC title. And then the last candidate at heavyweight is the. Andy Ruiz versus Anthony Joshua 2 rematch, which saw uh, their first fight was actually in June of 2019, where Ruiz scored the upset of the year with a seventh round TKO win over the previously undefeated Joshua. They fought in December in a rematch, and Joshua uh, showed everybody he was the better man, scoring a one-sided 12-round unanimous decision as he regained all three of his world titles back. So now let's get into our top five finalists for rematch of the year, you know, and see who took who took it as the best one. The first, finishing the year, number five for rematch of the year is Miguel Richel versus uh, Francisco Vargas, two for the WBC, WBC Super Featherweight title that's 130 pounds. These two guys locked horns originally in January of 2017. Burchelt scored a monster upset at the time uh, scoring an 11th round knockout win where he really beat Vargas down. Um, Vargas hadn't fought much in the two years, uh, two plus years since their fight, but Burchell really uh, stepped up and proved he was the best in the division in all that time, not losing his belt at all, making about five or six successful defenses. So he, he was going in into the rematch with Vargas, the favorite, and, um, and wanted to leave no doubt, but Vargas at the older age wanted to show that he uh, you know, wanted to avenge the only pro defeat of his career, and um, he went at it with uh, with him. It was a good fight, and um, they they went uh, you know, they were going toe to toe. But again, it was pretty much Burchelt landing two to three punches to Vargas's one. Vargas couldn't keep up. Burchelt's in his prime, and after six rounds, uh, and and Vargas starting to take a real beating. Um, Joel Diaz, Vargas's trainer, threw in the towel. And, uh, and rightfully so, you know, called the fight off and Burchelt won by TKO in the, in, after six rounds and retained his title impressively. So that was my number five rematch of the year. My number four rematch of the year was Tony Harrison versus Jermel Charlo too for the WBC Super Welterweight title. That's 154 pounds. Some people might want this fight higher. And you know what? I would, but there's just there was just three better rematches in terms of hype and and what it meant to boxing but this fight was a big rematch i mean uh harrison took a controversial unanimous decision the first time it was a fight a lot of people thought charlo won myself included but it was a close fight um the rematch these two guys all they did was talk shit to each other they were supposed to fight in june harrison pulled out of the fight uh 
due to an injury. And then that just pissed Charlo off more. So heading into the rematch, I mean, these two guys were just talking mad shit to each other. It was a it was a big time rematch, and it was a great fight in the rematch. Um, Harrison went down in the second round, but after that, seemed to be landing the better shots. But Charlo was probably landing more shots. But they it was just a good back and forth battle. And heading into the eleventh, uh, Charlo was slightly ahead on the cards, but it really was a fight that I felt could have went either way. And um, and Charlo caught Harrison, uh, dropped him, and just jumped on him a couple more times, dropped him again, and then the fight was waved off after he jumped on him uh, before a third knockdown could be rendered. So big time revenge here for Charlo as he regained the WBC title and, and put himself towards the top of the division. So that was a big time rematch. The finishing the year number three for rematch of the year is Elider Alvarez versus Sergey Kovalev for the 175 pound WBO light heavyweight title. Um, cut, you know, their first fight was in August of 2017 where, or 2018 where uh, Alvarez scored a big time seventh round TKO upset and it was my upset of the year in 2018. Heading into the rematch, people were unsure. A lot of people were saying that Kovalev was done. He was too old and he was done. I personally didn't think so because I thought he was completely outworking Alvarez the first time around. Um, he just got caught. He got caught with a big overhand right. Alvarez has a very good right hand. And I thought Kovalev could beat uh, Alvarez in a rematch. And Kovalev came out and fought great. He fucking boxed great, um, mixing his punches up, combinations, not just going for big power shots. And he really outworked and outgunned Alvarez, who was undefeated coming in and looking for that one big shot on Kovalev. And it just didn't come this time around. Kovalev didn't set himself up for it. Uh, and he boxed very good, very well, and scored a, a lopsided 12 round unanimous decision to get his revenge and become a three time light heavyweight champion. So that to me was rematch, uh, was number three for rematch of the year. Finishing number two for rematch of the year, and this one was close, but it was Deontay Wilder versus Luis Ortiz, two. Um, their first fight was for the WBC heavyweight title. Their first fight was in March of 2018, where it was really um, Wilder's first big test and challenge. And Ortiz at the time was the undefeated boogeyman. They, they went at it in a great fight the first time out. Um, Wilder knocked him down in the sixth. Ortiz came back in the seventh and almost knocked Wilder down and out in that round. And Wilder found his legs and ended up stopping a tired Ortiz in the 10th round. The rematch um, was going really well. It was a good fight uh, out the gate. You know, they were both landing their shots, but Ortiz seemed to be getting the edge again. And halfway through, he hadn't gotten caught by a big shot uh, like he did the first time around. So it, looks like he, it looked like he was boxing well. He was ahead on the cards and like he was going to do what it took to score a late stoppage or a decision. But Wilder's right hand is just fucking, you can't stop it for a full 12 rounds. I just noticed that. It's gonna land, and and if it lands flush, that could be good night, and that's what happened. Uh, Ortiz even tried to defend it. He was just half a second too slow, and he got caught right on the button, and dropped hard, and just was out on his feet pretty much. When he stood up, you could tell uh, Wilder would have jumped on him. It would have been over. The referee stopped the fight wisely uh, right there, and a seventh round knockout win for Wilder, as he really left no doubt. He looked more confident. He looked better. And he looked like the best heavyweight in the division that night. So, um, yeah, big time win and, and a big rematch right there. It was a rematch that Wilder did not have to take either, uh, considering, as, like I said, Ortiz always being the boogeyman. So big ups to Deontay Wilder for that win there. Almost got my rematch of the year award. But the rematch of the year, and some people might disagree, but it was Andy Ruiz Jr. versus Anthony Joshua for the Unified Heavyweight Championship. The reason I picked this one is just because of the hype for the rematch was huge. I mean, everybody was tuning in to watch that fight. Um, and it wasn't just Mexican-American fans. I know I'm from California, and there's a, a big Mexican fan base for Andy Ruiz. Trust me, everybody thought Andy Ruiz was, was going to win the rematch. Uh, just like everybody out here thought Mikey Garcia was going to beat Errol Spence. And again, I told everybody, that's not going to happen. Joshua is going to take this fight serious. He's not going to overlook Ruiz. He's gonna win this fight convincing. And, he, and you know, and I was even more firm on that the day before when they weighed in. Because Andrew Ruiz came in 15 pounds heavier than his 
original fight, and he already comes in out of shape and fat. And then Joshua came in 10 pounds lighter, ready to do what needed to be done and move in that ring. And much the way Kovalev did in his fight with Alvarez, that's what um, Anthony Joshua did in this fight. He completely outboxed and was on the move, but he wasn't running away. Um, Andrew Ruiz just wanted Joshua to fall into his traps again uh, in the middle of the ring and catch him in a slugfest, and Joshua was, wasn't having any. Uh, he, he landed some good shots, popped in, popped out, landed some good combinations, and just outworked Andrew Ruiz and um, regained the unified heavyweight title. The hype in this fight was why I gave it to this one. I think revenge gets a little bit more than a guy leaving no doubt that he's better. But uh, I like revenge wins, especially when one guy pulled off a major upset and the other guy's trying to prove I am the better man. Rui, Joshua got the revenge. You can argue Wilder over Ortiz um, was a better rematch, but I personally had to give it to Ruiz, uh, to, uh, Ruiz versus um, Joshua. And, um, yeah, so that's my 2019 rematch of the year. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. That's the This is the 2019 True Boxing Awards. And I'll come back at you with another one later. All right, guys. True Boxing. You've been hit with the truth.